Hello everyone and welcome to this new edition of Message of Hope and today we have the the, the chance to have Thomas Leamy joining us from the uh, Azores in the middle of the Atlantic. Welcome Thomas. Thank you so much Martine. It's a real pleasure to be here with you on this this uh, beautiful show, A Message for Hope. Thank you and I just want to remind people that you're a coach, a trainer and you will you help people with their stress and to have uh, I, a better high performance so you work with individuals and uh, businesses that's exactly right okay. thank you and now i will ask you the infamous question which is how does having this understanding how does that help you navigate whatever shows up in your life events circumstances how does that yeah. help you I mean, it's such a simple question, but at the same time, it's infinitely deep. There's so many different ways, Martine, that this understanding of how the mind works, how our psychology operates, there's so many different ways it has completely transformed my life. I'm talking about night and day. Mm -hmm. I was just speaking with Barb Patterson before this call on the topic of ease. Mm -hmm. And I think that's as good a place as any to, to start because before I came in contact with this understanding that we could call the three principles or health realization or any number of different things, before I came upon it, I was a victim of my circumstances. Mm. I was entirely at the mercy of what was happening to me. So you can imagine what the beginning of the pandemic would feel like. That's when I came in contact with this, this understanding. I thought that I had 500 fires that I needed to constantly be putting out that I needed to constantly give my attention to. And I thought it was all up to me. Mm. I thought there was no other way around it, that I had to put on my fireman hat and get the big hose and <laughs> deal with each fire individually, whether that was a loss of income from business or being locked down in a foreign country. My wife and I were in Greece at the time, not being able to visit my parents in Ireland my siblings or my friends i thought that each one of these externalities required a huge amount of my energy and input but my mother has a, a saying she often says a rest is as good as a change sometimes and the pandemic martin i'm sure you'll agree in many ways was a forced rest so it wasn't just a forced rest for me in terms of travel or in terms of social life. It was a forced rest in terms of income, in terms of business, because I had started a training company the year before and I was working with clients and we were just getting somewhere. We had a big event planned in Athens, Greece, 150 pharmaceutical professionals and collaborators from London, event management professionals from Athens. And in many ways for me, it felt like the quote unquote grand opening of my company. And then the pandemic. So I often think of it as a tablecloth moment. It just pulled everything. There's a scene in the the Disney movie Beauty and the Beast where a tablecloth goes and everything flies up in the air. That's the way I felt. And a few dark nights of the soul followed. But that forced pause had its benefit in hindsight because we were locked down in Greece, which was a very strict lockdown at the time. We actually had to SMS the government for permission to leave the house for 15 minutes a day. Wow. Yes, quite restrictive for uh, 
for people who are used to a lot of freedom. But the, the silver lining on that, Martin, being locked down in Greece is you have access to almost infinite islands. So we decided to be locked down in Crete and we went there for a month and then we went to Milos and Aegina and other islands. But when we went to Crete, we had, I, I, I say we, my wife was with me, but I had, everything was paused, all income, all contracts, all, all training clients with companies. So I decided I need to do something that doesn't just rely on, on companies. I need to look more into what relies on individuals. And that was coaching for me, which I was doing anyway since 2018, but I wanted to really upskill in it. And that's when I found a course by a fellow called Michael Neal called mm -hmm. Impacting Leaders. Bought it, started it, was horrified by it. I might as well tell you, Martine, I thought that it was a complete gook. we could say. I thought that it was a little bit silly and didn't know how it, it was relevant to leaders. But I kept going and um, I'm very glad I did because I started changing on the inside mm. in such a way that it allowed me to, not always, but a lot of the time, navigate life being led from the feeling of equilibrium and calm. I started to realize with this understanding that the calm and the peace that we search for through methods like meditation or Qigong, which I used to do a lot of, it's like yoga. Yeah, I know what it is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I started to realize that all of these tools were like fingers pointing at the moon, but they're not the moon. The moon is the vast space within that we are all part of, one unified field of conscious awareness, you could say, one ever-present deep peace, deep now, that's always there like the still at the bottom of the lake regardless of the turbulence on top and my mind started to get really quiet i said to my wife one day i don't know what's going on i can hear like you know crickets in my mind there's no noise but everything's falling apart on the outside like the business the income being locked down away from family but i feel amazing I almost felt guilty and it took me a while, Martine, to actually realize that my newfound level of peace was connected to this content that I was learning. I thought it was just what people were telling me, Thomas, it's because you're on a Greek island. You know, that's why you're experiencing this level of, of peace. But that wasn't why at all. It's because something was waking up inside me that allowed me to, that just humbled me in the most beautiful way and continues to um, have life-changing implications for me because I know, and I mean, I know for my clients that the tiny bit that I've seen and continue to see can make all the difference if I can help other people see it too. Like here in the Azores, I have one in-person client. Couldn't believe it because I never expected it. I expected it to be fully virtual, but I was working with him last week. He's a business owner here. And it just occurred to me on the, in the training room to draw two columns. And on one side, I put problems and he listed all his problems, every element of his life. The middle column we left blank. And then the third column corresponding to each problem, he put how each problem made him feel. 
so stressed, anxious, annoyed, angry, impatient, the list goes on. And by the end of two and a half hour sessions, he was able to see, my goodness, each one of these stressors and each one of these feelings, there's a missing link, which is the column in the middle, which of course is our experience of those things, which we can call through the experience of the principle of thought taking form in the moment. So when someone kind of can wake up to that, it's very liberating, Martin. It's very freeing because there's far less to do than we think if we only ever need to think of our internal state. We can trust that. And we can then trust ourselves to respond to whatever external challenge comes our way in the best way possible. It's like Linda Pransky talks about on the inside world, the outside world. It's like a spider being in the web. The spider, when the web gets, gets trapped or gets uh, triggered by a fly, it's like an external circumstance coming our way. Now we have a choice as the spider. We can rush to it and attack and go crazy and bring the fire hose with us. Or we can observe and see what we can do. And that knowledge to know that we don't have to be reactive to everything. We can trust ourselves to calibrate and then respond when a, a fresh idea comes our way. Like this morning, just a simple example, someone sent me a big request on my WhatsApp business account. And I had a, a response typed where I was going to share, I'm sorry, I don't think I can do that for you or this or that. And then I changed everything to one sentence. Let me think about this and get back to you and send it. But little things like that, Martin, make all the difference. You know, the, the, the one degree of change if a ship sets out from harbor from um, uh, New Brunswick <laughs> for, for port here in the Azores, if there's just one degree yeah. of difference, it could end up in, in Galway, Ireland. You know, that little one degree of change makes such a difference. So now with such a, like appalling circumstances, horrific circumstances taking place around the world, rather than seeing them as something that we need to attack with our fire hose, what if we, we calibrate ourselves first, knowing that that in turn is the best way to, quote, deal with whatever circumstance? You know what I mean? Totally. So beautifully, so briefly said. Now, because we all know that decision made from fear um, don't end up doing anything, anything good. They just and that's, that's right. this wisdom that we have, every one of us. It's always waiting for us to to listen. That is exactly the way I see it too. It's always there. It's just a matter of if we are able to listen. You know, sometimes I, with businesses, I work on something that I call executive nowness, which is basically helping them become present. But I've seen recently that we're always present. It's just a matter of if we're aware of yeah. that, aware of being present. Like you said, when we, when we are aware that we're guided by an internal navigation system that we can call wisdom or whatever we want, life becomes much more flowy. Totally. Mm -hmm. Just that the other voice is way louder <laughs> than yeah. the other one, <clears throat> but it's there and that's the beauty. No, mm. There's always a calmness under the noise. That's right. That's right.
Thank you, Thomas, for your wisdom and uh, for your time. And if people want to find you, where can they find you? Well, uh, first of all, Martin, thank you, because I believe the, the mission behind this show that you're doing is so pure and so helpful for people. So thank you for what you're doing. How can people find me? Well, I don't want to direct people to my website because it's changing as we speak at the moment. So probably the easiest way is to uh, Google one word with Thomas Leamy, and then you can listen to my podcast and the links under that will take you to wherever, Instagram or that. But I love hearing from people. Um, I get emails all the time about my podcast show that just humbles me and um i love chatting with people from all over the world my wife and i have traveled to 56 countries around the world together working for consulting firm before we came across this uh line of work but i just love hearing from people from different cultures with different backgrounds and different different uh ideas and that so yeah one word with Thomas Leamy, find a link there and you can find me somehow. Thank you. Thank you. Merci.